I want to start things off. I want to introduce someone who I have been watching for a long time now, and I've had the pleasure of actually meeting for the first time today. He's a lovely guy. He's so knowledgeable. He is an amazing, amazing person to, be, to, to have contributing to the crypto space. So please, will you give a great big London welcome all the way from El Paso, Texas, Rob from Digital Asset News. Have a seat. Oh. All right, all right. All right, Rob. Hold on, first, first. Give it up for Guy and his team. Aren't they doing a great job at this event? This is an amazing... Thank you, to get everybody out here, fantastic work. <laughs> man, I, I, went a bit, I went a bit out of myself for the welcome there. I thought I, thought I had to give you a kind of all-American <laughs> welcome. I hope, uh, I hope that didn't kind of throw you off too much. It was full of bravado and no Western skies. <laughs> I, I'll take it. I, I like how you did that. I was, I was fulfilling a long-held dream. Rob, it's so good to have you with us today. Thank you for coming all this way. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a quick trip. I got to do a little uh, vacation. Got to, got to come here for London. I've never been to London. It's a beautiful place. Me and the wife. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Going to Italy after this. And, I mean, what else are we going to do? Are we just going to keep looking at our portfolios all day long? Not something we want to do. So let's just get together and then fill each other up with a little bit of hopium and reality. So yeah. here we are. That's right. That's right. We're going we're gonna to tell it to you straight, ladies and gents. So this discussion is kind of titled, well, we were going to talk about crypto tax, weren't we? We were going to kind of start off with that. <laughs> it's, it's, boring, it's boring but necessary, folks. Yeah. You'll thank us later. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then I think we'll just have us kind of chat about the situation we find ourselves in right now. I'm just going to let Rob do most of the talking because I just, I don't know about you, but I just love listening to his voice amongst, amongst everything else. Yeah, it's all voice. It's not face. <laughs> I'll take it. So, Rob, before we, before we go on, can you tell us a little bit, for anyone who doesn't know, can you tell us a little bit about you and about how you got into doing what you do and your kind of situation at the moment? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much like everybody here. I mean, we got into crypto because we saw a pretty good opportunity. And in the beginning, I mean, when I was, uh, when I was younger, no one taught me about investing. Ne definitely not my parents and definitely not the schools. So when I got out of high school, the first thing I did was go to the Army. I became a 91 Bravo, which is an Army medic. And then I got out and went into uh, management and then found myself just doing entrepreneur type of things. And uh, as time went on, I realized that I couldn't trade my time for money, so I had to get into some kind of assets and do something that I actually appreciate. I think that's why uh, we are all here right now. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. It's great. And when did, you, when did you start? When were you like, right, I know what I'm going to do. Oh. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. So, well, before the YouTube channel, uh, I remember it was in uh, 2015, 2014. 2014, when you started investing. Yeah, 14. My, my, son came, my son came home from high school and he said, hey, I got a great opportunity. I got 500 bitcoins for $500 in this hard drive. And I said, what's a bitcoin? <laughs> and he tried to explain it to me. And I go, Alan, that makes absolutely no sense. That'll never take off. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. And I let 500 bitcoins go all those years ago, and at just two, two, three years later, I realized, wow, that was the biggest uh, investing mistake I could have made. But here we are, and uh, in 2017, I got into crypto, just like I think, you know what, let me, just, just a quick question for everybody here. Who here has been investing in crypto since 2011? Anybody? Jeez, I got to talk to you. 2012, <laughs> 2013, 14, 15, 16, 16, 16, 17. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here are my guys. 2018, 19, 20. Yes, Ooh. 21. Look at that. 22. Ah, I'll talk to you <laughs> later. So look, look, r real quick. If, if you just got in 2021, I understand your pain. Because, I mean, guys started investing in 2014 after 2013. I got in 2017 and lost 
In 2018, 70% down. So I know when you see guys like, like me on the stage, you're like, why is that guy laughing? Why is that guy so happy? It's not because I'm ecstatic about the market that we're in. It's just because I know exactly what's going to happen because I've already been there. So if you are just sitting around right now and you're in 2021, you realize like, shoot, I got to tell my significant other I, the portfolio went down this much. As time goes on, things will work themselves out and the market will rebound. The question is when. And I can't tell you that because I have no crystal ball. I just try to give you the, the most facts that I can give and just give you a little bit of perspective without too much hopium. And that's why I like being here with Guy because he does the exact same thing. Yeah, you're, you're right. And do you know something that, I, something that I've talked about a lot with people over the years? You know, people say, especially when I talk about the history of Bitcoin, you know, the early days of crypto, it's like, oh man, imagine, imagine if you got into Bitcoin when it was five cents. Or imagine if you got into Bitcoin under a dollar or ETH at the crowd sale. And I always think, yeah, there's obviously some people got in there, and, uh, but so few of them have held on. Because, I mean, I remember Bitcoin going to $1,000. And I remember thinking, surely people must be selling now. Like, that's it. People, people are going to take those profits. Who could have possibly imagined that it would climb any higher? I mean, $1,000 at the time just seemed insane, really. No, it, it's, yeah, and, and the same thing, like, so today we're sitting at, what's the price of Bitcoin? I'm sure somebody knows here. Yeah, it's pretty 35. So imagine, imagine what this is right now. Imagine like three or four or five years what the price of Bitcoin could be. Because I remember in 2017 when I first got in, I remember listening to Roger Veer, remember? And he would tell us, he would say, or even, uh, even McAfee would say where it's going to go to. And I was like, there's no way it can go to 10,000, 20,000. And 30,000 was ridiculous. And now here we are out here. And it's not just, of course, Bitcoin. There's some pretty great projects out there as far as altcoins. But just to get there, it's, it's hard to even think about. And uh, at some point, it will rebound. The question is when. The question is when. Answers on a postcard, people. So, Rob, so let's, let's talk tax, OK? Because... I think when, you know, when so many of us started off in crypto, we just thought, nah, tax, nah, that's nah, fine, <laughs> nah. They don't know how to tax it, we'll be all right. And now, I mean, it's a, it's a sign of how much the industry has grown, hasn't it? Yeah. That, that the fact that the regulators, the fact that the IRS in America, HMRC here in London, boo, here, you know. <laughs> yeah, can we just get a boo for HMRC? Oh, oh, really rich baritone there as well. I love it. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an indication of how far this industry has gone that, yeah, they want to tax it now. And, and people are now asking themselves, you know, how can, I, how, can I maximize my, how can I maximize my gains? How can I minimize my tax? And Rob, I mean, you've, you've walked the walk on this one. Am I right? Yeah, I've tried. So first of all, when me and Guy talked about this, like what we want to talk about, uh, this couldn't be the most boring subject of all time. Just on paper, just to say, oh, let's talk about tax. Nobody cares about that. It's just, <laughs> it's just a big snooze fest. But if you think about it, there's a couple of things. First of all, look how far we've come since all those, those years ago, 2009, 2010, when politicians would even talk about it, governments didn't even know what it was. And then all of a sudden, now they're talking about, well, we'll make it a legal tender, and also we're going to tax it. So when people talk to me about how crypto and digital assets are just gonna go away. I'm like, no, they won't. No, they won't because there's too much money to be made by taxing crypto and digital assets. Do you think that countries and governments and politicians are gonna let that kind of money go? Are you out of your mind? So they're gonna tax it and that's just how it is. So the real question then is, how do you minimize your taxes? And I see a lot of heads shaking right now. So let's just say that you could go someplace. What's the capital gains tax here? Capital of? Capital gains. Capital gains. Do you have capital gains? Capital gains tax, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we got CGT, all right. How much? 30? 20? Uh, I think it's about I think it's about 20% if you're in a higher bracket. So, Am let's I right? say, well, let's do some quick math. You make a million dollars, and 200,000 goes directly to the government. How's that sound? Boo. Or let's say you have in a corporation, 
that you have to have taxes. In the U.S., it's between 20 and 35 percent. On top of that corporation, that, that gets taxed. Well, that's a bummer, right? Well, what if I told you there's a place where instead of you paying the government 20 percent of capital gains tax, you pay them this much? You pay 0% in capital gains tax. And then let's say you have an LLC or an S Corp or a C Corp, and instead of paying 20 or 35%, you pay this much, 4%. That sounds good, right? So instead of you actually paying the government, you get to keep all that money. Doesn't that sound fantastic? <laughs> now, here's this, now, here's the catch. So if you can do that, all you got to do is move to a place. I'm like, oh, okay, that's all right, because I'm all the way up here. But if I gotta move to a place, I gotta move my family, I gotta give up some of my friends, I gotta stay in a certain place, and I gotta go through a lot of rigorations or different things that I have to do, it becomes sometimes not the greatest thing ever. But however, I'll just say it like this. What I did was I moved to Puerto Rico, and me and my wife talked about it, and I said, look, if we can move to Puerto Rico and pay 0% in capital gains tax for all the investments that we did, it's almost like the government is telling me we're going to pay you to move. And that's essentially what happened, and that's what we did. So that's, that's, the, that's the long and short of capital gains tax uh, moving to different places. And there's other places. There's Portugal. There's Dubai. the UAB. Where else? Dubai. Dubai is a great place. And Malaysia. And I think Malaysia is pretty Malaysia as well, isn't it? But uh, so uh, the thing is, though, as for people who are like, want to try to, uh, try to minimize these taxes, it really comes down to this, planning. Because right now, we're not in the greatest market, right? I mean, me and Guy are going to talk about Bear vs. Bull in a little bit, I think. But if we're not in the greatest market, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it behoove ourselves to plan these things out now before we get to a point where, I mean, God forbid we're all multimillionaires, how awful would that be? But if we are all multimillionaires and we have to pay all these taxes, would that be okay? Or maybe, instead of like making the multi-millions, maybe it's 100,000, 200,000. Then we're looking at 40% of, of, of taxes. So to make these plans now is just like your investment strategy that you're doing, whether that be trading on leverage, which sure, if you want to do that, it's not my thing. Swing trading, dollar cost averaging, or just sitting and holding and buying and holding. I think the time to really think about these things is today, because I got to tell you, in 2017, I didn't think I would be moving to Puerto Rico and minimizing taxes and trying to move funds around and have a YouTube channel and talking to Guy over here, I just didn't think it would happen and it comes up pretty fast. So if you're going to think about it, think about it right now because that day is coming faster than you think. Forewarned is forearmed, people. Robert, yeah, it's, it's so interesting to hear you talking about that, having, you know, having taken this step yourself and we were discussing earlier, weren't we, there's, it's, you know, you, a lot of people just think, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just move. You know, I'll just up six. Portugal sounds nice. Puerto Rico sounds sound nice. I like that the sound sound nice. of Puerto Rico. Oh, you got to come. It's great. <laughs> is, can I ask, is the, is the swimming pool in your video, is that in Puerto Rico? No, both, both of those are green screens. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Every asset, it, 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 the pools are, no, they're not. They're, so we have uh, the house in Puerto Rico. It's just, a, it's just our backyard. And then the one in El Paso is, we've had that house for 18 years or so. so wow. Yeah. But yeah, that's what it is. And the, but there is so much planning involved, isn't there? Because you have, you have kids, you have, a, you have a family, and... Yeah, four kids, two grandkids. Wow. So, yeah, it's and not easy. And so this idea of, you know, this idea of upping sticks, I mean, I'm sure, there are, I'm sure there are single people out there amongst us, or maybe part of a couple who just think, yeah, let's, let's do this, let's, let's go. But I think for a lot of, a lot of people out there, there's, there's so much to consider. You know, you're, okay, so you're moving to this place, you're going to pay a whole lot less tax, but where are the kids going to go to school? You know, what sort of, what sort of lifestyle are, I guess, are they going to have out there, just to say nothing of what you guys are going to do? It's just, it's just something to think about. Like, I think people here in London, you wouldn't have any problem with the driving in Puerto Rico, because it's the exact same. It's like people just, uh, everything's just like a suggestion of, of where you want to go, and then they just go. That's exactly no, no, how it is in Puerto you, Rico. After you, <laughs> Yeah, after you. No, 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 they're all in place. And then, so then you got to think about like, well, do I want to uplift my family, and do I want to move there? Because in, in Puerto Rico, I've met a bunch of crypto OGs that are there, and they've told me the same thing. They're like, you know what? It sounded good at the time, but there's some times I wish I wouldn't have done it. 
because of family or uh, other issues with businesses or things like that. So if you're going to move these places like Portugal or something like that, then for, for crypto min or tax minimization, just think about it real, real hard before you do it. But I will tell you, it, does, uh, it is nice on the pocketbook and the, and the bank accounts if you can do it. But again, it's all about planning and getting there to that next step. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Rob, let's, let's talk about the market, shall we? Let's talk about the, the state we find ourselves in at the moment. Now, I, I've, I've, I saw you on the channel the other day. I've seen you a few times. You're saying we're in a bear market. Well, you, yeah, I, th I think, and, uh, and you have to remember something, is that uh, me and Guy, mostly me, I, I'm not going to be 100% correct. I have no crystal ball. And all the different people that are out there that'll tell you like it's going to go to the moon, it's going to be the most fantastic hopium thing of all time, they have no idea either. So when I say these things, I can just tell you what my experiences are and where I see things going. But I could be wrong. Right now, I see it's a very it's a very bearish sentiment out there. And if we take a look at the definition of, of say a bear market, we're taking a look at I mean just look at a definition 20% uh, drop from all time highs within a certain period of time frame. Then we take a look at also the sentiment that is out there. And besides this room of all you people, I'm pretty sure you guys are pretty bullish. You think it's going to happen. It's great. But there's a, there's a larger ecosystem of investors out there. And I can tell you the sentiment, greed and fear index, is still hovering around, depending on the day, between 22 and 28, which is pretty low. So the sentiment is there. The all-time high drop, I think 69,000 to, what are we at now, 35? Maybe we're at... Yeah. Yeah, we're on 38, 37%. So if it's not a bear market, Lord help us. I would hate if this is the bull market. <laughs> okay, I told you we weren't in the hopium business, ladies and gents. Yeah, I think, I mean, I hear what you say, Rob. I think we, yeah, there's a lot of bearish sentiment out there. The, the indicators, and yeah, I should, I should say as well, I have absolutely no guarantee that I will be right either. I mean, this is the, this is the tricky thing, isn't it? You know, people, people look to us for advice, and they look for us for, I guess, answers a lot of the time. One of the things that I've noticed most about the channel when we put a video out, especially kind of off our main channel, one of the things that always does really well is when we do a kind of emergency market update. You know, sometimes we'll do it on Coin Bureau Clips, our kind of second channel. Sometimes we'll put it out on TikTok or Instagram or something like that. It always amazes me how much, you know, when the market takes a dip, how much people just, they want some answers. They want to know why their portfolio is in the red. Why? Yeah. And so, like, every time I, every time the market drops, it's the same thing. Like, there's, we think we know the reason, but there's a lot of different reasons out there. It's like Socrates says, you know, I know nothing. I mean, and the older that I get, I realize just how much I do not know. But I will say that I know that there's some indicators behind the drops, but the grand scheme of things is the exact same. The crypto market is strong. It will be strong. It will continue to grow. We're at a, a two, no, 1.8 trillion market cap. Do you, yeah. know what, do you know what the market cap of gold is? It's like $11 trillion. How about the stock market? It's $100 trillion. How about real estate? It's $292 trillion. How about derivatives? It's one quadrillion dollars. That's a real number. I had to look that up. Quadrillion. <laughs> so when I see the things and the, and the problems that, that crypto can solve, it's always the same thing. I mean, right now, it's a bad, it's a bad day. It's a bad week. It's a bad month. It's about quarter. But in the long run, one, two, three, five years, I think we're all going to be happy that we are where we're at. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. As I said earlier, there's, I, I kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of with you, Rob. I think, like I say, the bearish sentiment is out there. I think there are there are a lot of factors suggesting we're not there yet. We, we could go lower. I mean, we're still setting higher lows. We're still seeing... We're still seeing so much investment, like I was talking about earlier. And one other thing that I noticed, especially from, uh, this was from some of my conversations I had with people in Miami, talking to some of the people there, and a lot, obviously the Miami conference was a real, it was so corporate focused. Everyone was there to do a deal. It was, 
it was extraordinary. And, but the, a lot of what I think is going unreported at the moment, or that we're perhaps not paying enough attention to, is the amount of adoption that is going on in other countries, in places like Asia, Latin America, Africa, you know, and it kind of falls off the radar a little bit because a lot of the time this is just people, you know, maybe buying $10 worth of Bitcoin, transacting in really small amounts that aren't going to set the world on fire, that aren't going to make the headlines anytime soon. But the thing is that there are hundreds of millions of people doing this. There are people working on creating exchanges that are compliant with Sharia law. Opening, yeah, it's, it's extraordinary. And the growth that is going on kind of under our noses, I think this is the big unreported story at the moment. Well, I mean, this is why, like, I know there's a lot of technical analysis people out there. And, uh, and that's for you, traders, way smarter than me. But when I take a look at it, that's why I like to read the news, take a look at the news, listen to Guy, listen to other YouTubers, just to keep myself abreast of what is going on behind the scenes. Because remember, like 2014, there was no governments talking about it. There was no institutions getting it. There was no talk of legal tender. That's r ridiculous. 2017, 18, 19, it was the same thing. 2020, now we get the Paul Tudor Jones. We get the hedge funds. We get the legal tender. And not just, not just in one country, not in El Salvador, but uh, in Central Africa, the Republic of Central Africa. So if we take a look at the things that are going on, the, the rails are being built, I think there's just a couple of things that need to get done so we can move to that next step. And one of those, this is not going to go over well. Try it anyway, Rob. Is a little, just a little regulation. Just a little, just a little bit of clarity about what it is. All we got to deal is what's a commodity? What's a security? What is a currency? If the OCC can take one part, if the CFTC can take the other part, and if Gary Gensler can ever get and figure out what he wants to do and call whatever he thinks is security, then we can move forward and these institutions can actually make some things happen. The, just, the problem is just getting that over the hump. I don't think Gary's the guy to do it, and I will say, when Gary first got uh, elected to uh, commissioner, I was like, this guy's gonna be great because he taught at MIT, and I was super duper wrong about that one. We were, we were so, we had such high hopes of Gary, didn't we? Gary, you let us down, man. No, it was, yeah, it's been a huge disappointment. I mean, I think, I, I, I get the impression that, that Gary Gensler is, you know, he's not only kind of, there's this, diff, there's this sort of regulatory, Salad over in the states, isn't there? As you say, you got the the OTC, the uh, the CFTC, all these yeah. different bodies. The everyone's kind of fighting for a slice of that regulatory pie. But I get the impression also at the time, kind of fighting to not get a slice of that pie. Yeah, because I mean, here's the thing: like, if you if you're resting on money, where are you going to put your money right now? Well, you can leave it in money. That's what my grandparents told me. Put it in a savings account at 8.5% in inflation. Sounds like a plan. Not a good plan. Oh, so what else do you put it into? What we can do into the hyperinflated market for equities. What's going to happen there? I think we know what's going to happen. And what about real estate? Me and my wife invest in real estate. It's a great investment tool. But right now, everything is so hyperinflated there, too. How can you get into real estate? So where do you put your money? Well, if there was a little bit of regulation, tell us where to go. And I think if there was some clarity, Maybe then these big institutions that are sitting on the sidelines that are just doing things by proxy, investing in a micro strategy, can say, you know what? I know what I want to do. I don't want to keep it in money because it's a, it's a melting iceberg. I want to put it into crypto and digital assets because it's a big asymmetrical bet. This is the problem, though, and we can't get over that hump. <laughs> Man, it's, yeah, it, it's evolving so quickly. Everything's happening so fast out there. And I mean, do you think? Is it fair to say that the most, the most powerful man in crypto right now is Jerome Powell? I think it's Guy from Coin Bureau. <laughs> <laughs> I told him to say that. It was a condition of coming over. He has to say that. Checks in the mail. <laughs> no, I mean, here we are. Like, how many of you could have imagined just a few years ago paying such 
close attention to what the Fed is, the, the Fed is doing. It's, it's like we're all kind of metaphorically crouched outside the door of the room where they're having this meeting. It's like, what's he going to say? Is it going to be 50? Is it going to be 75? What? Good, Gerard, Jay, tell us. We have to know. <laughs> It's like, it's like the chisme or the gossip, as we say. It's, it's like, what did he say? What did he do? Because that's, unfortunately, that's what the market is kind of, I'm like, we always, we say it's priced in, it's priced in. But I got to tell you, if, if they would have came out, if Jerome Powell would have came out and said, you know what, we're going to go 0.75 or even one, I can tell you that would not be priced in. So it's a good thing we went 0.5. So again, when we talk about planning these things, like over, I always talk about this. When in doubt, zoom out. So right now, when we zoom into these markets, not the best thing. But if we zoom out six months, a year, two years, three years, if you got a, like a five-year plan in crypto, I think you're going to you're gonna be pretty happy. It's just, it's just it's, it's like uh, Lynch says, everybody has the brain power to invest. The thing is, do you have the stomach for it? Yeah. Wow, I couldn't have put it better myself, Rob. <laughs> so let's, let's round things up. Um, here we are, you know, we're, we're in a bear market, we're not in a bear market. Who, who can say? No, no, neither of us can, can say for sure. But looking at the months ahead, I can, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to put it down and say, all I know is that we're in for volatility. It's going to be... It's going to be, we're in for a kangaroo market, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it's going to be great for traders, range-bound traders. They love volatility, so this, guy, this is your time to shine, everybody. <laughs> and this is, this is just my time to do the same thing I did in 20, 2018, which was just slowly dollar cost average, buy up Bitcoin. I remember buying Bitcoin at, at 3,500, 4,000, Ethereum at 100 bucks, Cardano at 7 cents, and on down the line. And it's, I think it's the same thing repeating. So. The technology is just getting better you know it's and again if in doubt zoom out ignore kind of ignore the the number side of it and look at focus on all the technology focus on all the progress that's being made behind the scenes you know the likes of cardano yeah, yeah, all so much building going on the, we've got the merge coming up in 18 months time <laughs> in some time we'll some figure time. it out <laughs> not quite sure when <laughs> i will say this though so everybody here i i, I will just say one thing is that you know, we talk about front running. You know, we want to front run the banks, front run the institutions. You know that everybody here is pretty much front run the large institutions? I mean, think about that. I mean, especially you guys who've been in 2016, 17, 2011. I mean, you front run MicroStrategy. You front run all the banks. You front run all the countries. You definitely front run the Federal Reserve. So you guys and ladies are here, and you're ahead of every single person out there. And you're at the very precipice of what's about to happen. I don't know how long, much time it's going to be, but I think you're in the right place. Well, Rob, I think we should wrap this up now. Let's wrap but it up. I want to say thank you so much for coming along today. Thank you for coming all this way. I mean, I know you get to see London. You're doing a bit of a European tour as well. <laughs> you're kind of tacking a holiday onto the, onto the end of it. But I really appreciate you coming. I've, I've admired your work. I've loved your channel for so long. It's, it's just great to, to go there and get the facts. No hype, no hopium. And it's, you know, it's what we try to do as well. But you're just, you do it in such a great way. And I really admire what you, what you do and your attitude to it. And I just want to say on behalf of everyone, I think, Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. For having me. Rob from Digital Asset News. Yeah. Subscribe. Or I'm coming for you. <laughs>